This is the long engagement by Arthur Hughes, completed in 1859. Hughes wasn't a member of the pre Raphaelite Brotherhood, but he was very close to them in the 1850s, and he shared a lot of their ideals and their approaches. So, for example, he had an interest in truth to nature, the idea of painting nature directly out of doors, right in front of the thing that you're trying to paint. So, in the case of the landscape, in this painting, much of it was painted out of doors directly from nature. And in one of his letters, Hughes talks about being outside painting wild roses that you can see in the background. Um, and was there with the perspiration pouring off him and this giant bee that kept attacking him all the time and driving him crazy. And he talks about this in his, in his letters. And uh, these are the kind of trials and tribulations that pre Raphaelite artists working from nature uh, in this quest for authenticity, these are the kind of trials that they had to put up with. Now, this painting started out um, as a subject from Shakespeare, um, from As You Like It. Hughes was going to paint an image of Orlando and Rosalind in the Forest of Arden. But he then changed his mind and decided to turn it into a modern life subject, showing a pair of modern day lovers um, who you can see here. The title of the painting, The Long Engagement, derives from the fact that the lovers here, the clergyman and his sweetheart, uh, are unable to marry because they don't have enough money. He just doesn't earn enough uh, to be able to support her. And we know they've been courting for a long time because her name has been carved on the tree here. Uh, in one of their past uh, trysts in woodland has been almost completely obscured by the ivy that's been growing up. So this is very, a very long term uh, courtship. And also when we look close up at the faces, we can see that these people remind the first um, flush of youth. Now the landscape background helps to add to the meaning of the painting and helps to explain the plight of these two lovers. So in the background we can see that nature uh, is all kind of blooming and flourishing and squirrels are pairing off and nesting as a pair of squirrels in the branch there. And that's in contrast to the kind of barren situation, the kind of limbo that these two frustrated lovers uh, find themselves in. And the wild roses in the background here, uh, twining around, are symbolic in the popular Victorian uh, flower symbolism of love, but particularly of the pleasures and pains of love. Uh, the sort of bittersweet qualities of love, because wild roses have soft blooms, but they also have sharp thorns. Um, even the claustrophobia of the landscape helps to create this idea that these lovers are trapped in their situation. Um, they seem surrounded and hemmed in by all of this version of nature, so a sense that they're trapped in this situation in which they have no control. Now, the story is left deliberately very open ended. We don't know uh, what's going to happen to these, these lovers. And 19th century audiences really like pictures that were open in this kind of way, so we expect to speculate about what might happen next and what might be in store for the characters. There are perhaps signs um, that there may be a happy ending for this couple, there might be signs of optimism. Um, the fact, for example, that there are all sorts of signs that their love is strong and enduring, the clasped hands, the geranium the young woman wears here, which is a symbol, it's a symbol again, in flower symbolism of, of comforting, so it's a woman is supportive of the man, but particularly the presence of the faithful dog here, traditionally is constancy and royalty, which suggests that they're not endure. And also, when he showed this work at the Royal Academy for the first time, he accompanied it in the catalogue with a quotation from Chaucer, um, which is roughly, for how might so 